Hey, how's it going guys? Today we're gonna to be talking about a very compact and affordable amplifier from SMSL. This is the SMSL DA9. It's about $250 and it packs so much performance. So let's get right into it. So the SMSL DA9 is the successor to the DA8 that we reviewed in the past. And it is also part of the family with the SH9, the headphone amplifier that we reviewed and the SU9, which is the DAC. Now these are all stackable because they, you know, they, sh they share the same chassis. And to be honest, they share the same performance. They're both really good value items. And this in particular stole my heart. So what's so cool about this amplifier? Well, in terms of power, at eight ohms, it does 50 watts. At four ohms, it does 90 watts. And then at two ohms, yes, there is a two, mo two ohm rating for this amplifier. It does 150 watts. And that is very impressive because you don't see a two ohm rating for most amplifiers. Having four ohm is already like, whoa, like this can double its power with, uh, you know, and it has good current. That's, that's very nice. And that's something that you see when you spend much more than $250. Now, on top of all that, you get XLR in, which is very rare, especially at this price point, RCA in, and the convenience of Bluetooth 5.0. Now, in terms of connecting your speakers, you get a kind of a recessed or smaller banana plug jack that can also accept bare wire. And then you also get a subwoofer pre-out. This was something that wasn't available with the uh, DA8, the uh, predecessor to this unit, and it is a warm welcome for this because most people using this amplifier are going to be using it in a near field setup. It's small, compact, and it works really well for near field. And having a subwoofer pre out is just fantastic because most bookshelves benefit from a subwoofer and it helped with the overall, you know, setup. It just made it so much easier instead of you know, relying on the high level input from a subwoofer. And then on top of all that, you get an embedded power supply inside the unit. And all you need is an IEC cable to connect the unit and give it power. At the front, you get an LCD screen, similar at siblings, you know, the DAC, the SU9 and the SH9. It has an LCD screen and it has some adjustments built in. So you get EQ. It has EQ profiles and it also has treble and bass adjustment, which is very useful, especially if you have speakers that are, you know, you know, tilted in either range that you want to tone down or increase. And then it has a, you know, generic volume knob that is shared with its siblings. So overall, I think this is an absolute stellar unit. So the system that I used was is right behind me. I used my fine F500s and my rel subwoofer. Hooking it up was an absolute breeze. And typically in the system, I would normally have my Marantz CR611. And that's a thousand dollar, you know, streamer, integrated amplifier, CD player. And I've used it for about three to four years. And that unit stopped working on me. It's actually in repair right now. And this unit just conveniently happened to come in as soon as that amplifier died and i'm glad i set it up in the system because this is very impressive i don't think i'll actually be going back to the marantz and that is um something i never thought i would say but for 250 bucks and the marantz being a thousand dollars i actually prefer the, the the overall performance the noise floor and the actual sound coming from the smsl and then to top it all off it's even more compact it takes less space and it doesn't heat up at all so the actual chip that they use inside here is class d it's these new german infineon uh, class d chips that was also featured on the predecessor but it's obviously clearly has more power and that's thanks to the upgraded power supply i believe it's sourced from meanwell and whatever optimizations that they've done so right off the bat um one of the things that you notice when using an amplifier near field is the apparent noise floor because you're so close to the speakers you are able to hear any hum or distortion or any type of artifacts from your amplifier um, when you're this close especially considering that my finds are efficient and very sensitive um, it's a lot more noticeable and with this amplifier it's dead silent even when cranked up to 40 steps out of the 70 um, steps available in terms of volume attenuation there is zero noise floor. And at 40 steps, 
this room gets filled to ear bleeding levels. Typically for me, I would be listening it to about 30 dB, uh, 30 steps, and that's about 90 dB max in terms of you know peak dynamics, and that is more than enough. And having a low noise floor is fantastic. And this amplifier definitely excels in that with the low distortion. I believe it's like 0.003 on their spec sheet. But you guys can check that out um, just to, if you want to look into that. We'll leave a link down below. Um, and that's very impressive. Now, I'm no stranger when it comes down to compact amplifiers. When I was trying to set the system up, you know, initially, I tried a PS Audio Sprout. Um, I had the NAD D3020 and some of the TX smaller offerings. And those were all in one integrated amplifiers that cost a lot more than what this SMSL asked for. And not only does the SMSL have a lot more power, but it's very apparent that this has a very low noise floor compared to the others. In fact, I don't think the PS Audio Sprout is worth its asking price of $1,000. I struggled to sell that unit. And I don't mean to be the, uh, you know, uh, want to be mean, but uh, I think it's just outdated and these Infineon chips are the way to go. Um, I don't think I would actually go back to the ICE modules or paying the price that I did for those compact ICE module based um, amplifiers. Now in terms of sound, it just sounds clean. There's no real attenuation in any frequency, but if you need to tone down or increase anything in terms of treble and bass, you have the option through this amplifier. Um, if there's anything I want to nitpick with, with, I think with this amplifier, especially when it's LCD screen and, you know, the adjustments that it can do, it would be amazing if they implemented a high pass filter when a subwoofer is connected. That would make it a game changer because I don't think anything at this price point has that uh, option. And then when compared to like, you know, other SMSL amps like the AD18, this is a significant upgrade. The AD18, I've, it was one of the first amplifiers I, I bought for a near field listening way, way back. And this destroys it in terms of just noise floor, the, the, the clean, clean volume and power that it provides. And, you know, having no real attenuation or, um, you know, a digital sound to the treble. Um, the fine F500s just sounded as good as I reviewed them as, if not better in terms of dynamics. And I think that is amazing. So if you haven't grasped it already, I think this is probably the best amplifier money can buy bang for buck. $250 is an absolute steal. And I highly recommend it. In fact, I would like to give it an award for like the best bang for buck amplifier you can buy. And that basically wraps up my review. I love this amplifier. I'm going to be keeping it and using it in the system. It is totally adequate and I'm a huge fan. Um, if you guys have any questions, leave a comment down below. Make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't. And really, when you guys subscribe, it really helps us grow as a channel. We get more products in and that only means more videos for you guys. So with that all being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.